Welcome, everybody. And it's now 1.33. Our time is limited. Uh, we've realized in the last webinars that we lost track of time and um, had to be told when to end. So uh, we'll get started. Uh, we'll start off with some introductions. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm Peter Hall, and I'm the Vice President Academic for the New Brunswick campus. And I have with me, um, it might just be easier to introduce everybody now. Um, I'll start from the top. Uh, we have Lan Hu, who uh, is our registrar for the New Brunswick campus. We have Catherine Benjamin, who is with us from Student Finance. We have Dr. Kevin Alderson, who is the director of the new doctoral program. And we have Nigel Gotro, who is the director of admissions. And welcome, and I thank you all for being panelists with me here and for helping to answer questions. So I know you're all anxious to hear more about the, our new innovative doctoral program. And just before we get started, uh, I just want to let you know or remind you that all of, all of the information that we will be discussing, um, hopefully uh, all of the answers that we provide to your questions are online. Um, so if uh, we cover a lot of information in these webinars, so by all means, please make sure that uh, after the webinar, you go to the webinar. Uh, and we'll also be posting a recording of, we've had three webinars, we'll be posting one of them. They're all very similar. Um, okay, so if we could start, please, Dr. Alderson, um, I think people might be curious to hear about a, a brief overview of our new doctoral program. Thank you for stressing the word brief, Peter, because as some of you know, I can go on and on. You know, this is such an exciting time, not only for Yorkville, but for the counseling profession in Canada, because just two weeks ago, we got approval from the government of New Brunswick to launch this, which means now it's an official program across Canada, and we are the very first to offer a Doctor of Counseling and Psychotherapy program, which is done completely online. So it's so portable that one could do this program from virtually anywhere in the world. And we really hope that as a result of that, we are going to have people from uh, underserved communities, uh, uh, those who might feel uh, marginalized or live in remote places, that this program is going to be well suited for a lot of people, but it is the highest credential in the evolving counseling and psychotherapy field in Canada. And so many people with master's degrees in counseling have felt, quite frankly, Peter, a bit stuck. They have not been able to uh, get into a doctoral program that follows the track of the counseling profession. There certainly are many doctoral programs in psychology out there. And I'll say from the outset, this is not one of them. Doctoral programs today, um, most of them are as competitive to get into as our uh, medical uh, degrees. And so um, we wanted a program that was more accessible and staying true to the philosophy of Yorkville we have made this one accessible. There are admission requirements that Nigel will speak to in a bit. But this program is uh, 10, uh, 10 terms uh, in length. So it will take most people about uh, three and a quarter years to complete the DCP program. That uh, unlike the, the Masters of Counseling Psychology program that uh, Yorkville offers, which is a five week model, five weeks per course, that the DCP program is seven weeks per course. So we intentionally designed the program to make it not quite as perhaps stressful as many people's master's programs were. And so the majority of people coming into this program are, are gonna be working full time, uh, I assume. And we don't want to uh, bog you down. So you complete one course of seven weeks, you have a week off, and then you take the second seven week course. So the term for this program is 15 weeks. Then after the term concludes, you have a two week break before the next term starts and we just continue to repeat that cycle. So we've built in lots of breaks for, uh, for everyone to uh, be able to 
uh, have a, a balanced life. That's our hope. Uh, but we still know that graduate study does take a lot out of us. So this program is 60 credits. It's uh, 20 courses, 60 credits. So three courses each credit. Um, I could walk through the 20 courses, but I'll just give you a sense of, of, of a couple of them, if that's okay. And, uh, and then probably we want to move to um, questions because uh, people have a lot of questions about something that's as new as the DCP. Um, you know, the very first course you take is actually a course that runs through the entire program. It only meets uh, twice a term and it's intended as an ongoing orientation, but it also introduces you to a hallmark of this program, which is the Applied Scholarship Project. Um, as many of you know, if you pursue a PhD in, um, in psychology, you're going to be doing, in most cases, a dissertation. And a dissertation involves uh, uh, doing new empirical research and defending that to a panel at the end. And you know, the sad reality is there is a percentage of people that complete all requirements of a PhD, but they never complete the dissertation. And why is that? We should ask that question. One of the reasons is that um, people become very busy once they're finished their coursework. And the dissertation, quite frankly, is scary to a lot of doctoral students. Our, our applied scholarship project, first and foremost, is applied but it's completed actually over the course of seven segments across seven courses. So by the time you come to the end of term nine, you have this completed. You've received feedback on the components of it uh, more than once. And um, you do defend it similar to a dissertation, but the defense is meant to be a friendly uh, you know, challenge. It's meant to be challenging. We wanna ask you some tough questions about what you've achieved. But what is the ASP? The ASP is the short uh, acronym for Applied Scholarship Project. It is a real life solution to a real life problem. So applied from the start to the end. I'll just use the example of if you want to specialize in eating disorders, then your ASP could be focused on that. You'd start with uh, defining the problem and making it uh, somewhat narrow because eating disorders is way too broad. And then you would create a, a publishable literature review, essentially. Lit reviews are a wonderful addition to the counseling field because it really is the quickest way for a professional um, to, to find out what we know about a field, what we don't know, and what we still need to learn in terms of further research and, and applied work in the field. Um, so I can elaborate more on that later. Another course you begin with in the first term has to do with our professional identity as counselors, because counseling, as most of you likely know already, has become a distinct profession from psychology. And psychology has been around for a lot of years. Uh, it's placed a heavy emphasis on diagnosis and in a sense separating us from, uh, from those who are often called patients. Whereas in counseling practice, we place a higher emphasis on collaborative work with clients and creating a working alliance. And so uh, it's important that um, our students learn very quickly that this is the field of counseling. And, uh, and then the, the, the rollout of all the other courses is online for you to have a look at and, uh, and, and get more of the details about. Um, so Peter, I'll, I'll leave the uh, uh, overview at that for the moment. Perfect, that's great. Thank you, Dr. Alderson. Uh, we are getting a lot of program specific questions coming in. Thank you through the Q&A forum and we will get to as many of them as we can. Before we do that, however, um, I would like to move over to uh, first to Nigel Gotro, our Director of Admissions, um, to perhaps give a quick overview of the admissions process. Thank you, Dr. Hall, and welcome everyone. Thanks so much for attending today's session. Uh, as Peter mentioned, my name is Nigel Gotro. I'm the, doc, uh, the uh, 
uh, Director of Admissions uh, at Yorkville University uh, here in New Brunswick. Uh, so first, um, in terms of admissions requirements, all of those are listed on our website, so yorkvilleu.ca. Uh, they're also accessible through our academic calendar. Uh, for uh, this year, so September being our first intake, uh, we will um, have 32 seats available. Uh, so applications are now open. Um, in terms of starting the application process, you can either uh, submit that through uh, our website or you can reach out to one of our admissions advisors directly through doctoral admissions at yorkvilleu.ca and we will post that here uh, in the chat uh, so all of you have access to that. Uh, so once you submit your $75 application fee, an admissions advisor will guide you through um, the process, all the documentation required in order to, to be reviewed by the admissions committee. Um, hopefully, and, and once you are accepted into the program, um, you will uh, be asked to uh, submit a $500 registration deposit, after which you will secure your uh, first terms payment arrangements with the uh, student finance uh, department or bursar's office. Um, seats are limited again uh, for September to 32. However, we are accepting up to 46 applications. The reason for that is we recognize that uh, some individuals may need to defer or choose to cancel their uh, application prior to the September start. Uh, we recognize, of course, that life can happen. Uh, you know, maybe not be able to submit all of your letters of reference on time. Uh, so we will accept up to 46 applications for September. Uh, however, seats are limited to 32. In the event that uh, uh, we reach the uh, 32 and somebody defers or cancels, then we will go to the 14 remaining applicants uh, to request that they uh, submit the registration fee and make uh, their payment arrangements. Uh, if you are on the wait list and uh, you aren't able to um, start classes in September, then we will give you the opportunity to uh, join the next intake, which will be in January of 2021. So each year there are three intakes, uh, September, January, and May. Uh, so for January of 2021, we will accept 32 students. In May of 2021, we will accept another 32 students. And then in September, of next year, we'll actually uh, double that. So it will go up to 64. And that's broken down into cohorts of 16. Um, so again, um, essentially, uh, you can submit your request for information and complete your application online uh, through our website, or you can reach out to doctoral admissions at yorkvilleu.ca and admissions advisor will get back to you uh, very soon uh, and to guide you through the process. Thank you, Nigel. And again, just before we move on to the specific questions, I'd like to uh, jump over to uh, Catherine Benjamin from Student Finance. Uh, and if you could perhaps, uh, Catherine, give a, a overview of finances for the doctoral program. Of course, perfect, thanks so much. So uh, uh, as we said, we are uh, trimester based, so it goes uh, three semesters per uh, year. Um, and all the, it's broken down and is shown on our website. Uh, we are, um, we do charge, each course is three credit hours and we do charge at a per credit rate of $750, meaning that, you know, the average term is about, when we add them all up, average term is usually around $4,500. Uh, but again, the court, the program will cost approximately, uh, at today's rate, $45,000. Um, we do offer, uh, for any of those that are, you know, working on funding or how to pay this and, uh, what plans we have to offer. We do offer that, you know, you can pay at a trimester basis. So every term that we begin into, uh, you can pay at the start of the term just for that term only. Uh, or we do have uh, financing available that you can pay on a monthly rate. Uh, so literally we just divide the tuition charges over the, mo the months of the term uh, and you can pay that way as uh, you want. Uh, at this time, we, I know some people I've seen in a few questions there in regards to scholarships and that sort of thing. Uh, entrance scholarships. Again, because we are new and we're getting into this, we 
don't have any uh, scholarships that are approved at this time, entrance scholarships or merit-based scholarships and that sort of thing at this time. Um, I do know they are under review and you know, our executive team and our higher ups, we'll call them, are looking into reviewing that and see what can be put in place. And if we do have any additional information on that or any of that comes available, we will definitely get that word out to you. You know, it'll be on the website um, under our scholarship section. Uh, and we'll definitely get that information all out to everybody as quickly as possible. As soon as we know, we'll let you know that stuff. Um, the other big question that we do have uh, that we uh, students are looking into is funding for the program. Uh, we do have an application in for financial aid uh, through New Brunswick. Yeah, this is a New Brunswick uh, location. Um, we do have an application in for uh, student aid. Uh, the one really thing to point out here is that uh, Yorkville University or other programs that are offered by Yorkville University are approved already for funding, which means our school is a designated school uh, for the purpose of releasing student loans. Uh, so when we don't have to get our school designated, we just have to get the program designated. And as uh, Dr. Alderman mentioned earlier, we only got approval about two weeks ago. Uh, which is wonderful and exciting. So a lot of things need just need time to kind of sort out. So we do have the application ready to go. We have all the paperwork, as you know, government things. We got to get all this stuff in. We have it all submitted uh, to um, the ministry in hopes that we can get an answer back on funding and what's available for you. Uh, we do have different provinces have different rules, so there will there may be funding available in different provinces, similar to that of our other programs and online. Uh, once we know more about it, once we get any feedback uh, back from our ministry and our submission of the approval for funding for this program, again, we'll definitely get that information out to you guys as soon as we know anything uh, and get it up there and show you how it works and uh, what we have to do for any qualification and eligibility for students that are applying for funding. Uh, if you do have questions in regard to anything with funding, I do say our first our email is under the contact us on the website or even here, you please reach out to our bursar's office, you know, or uh, through if you, when you do apply through uh, Nigel's team of the admissions team, uh, it would be great. Uh, we can get you any further information that you do need in regards to uh, the program or any of the things that have been offered in the past through student loan. But again, as soon as we hear any more about the student loan, we'll definitely get that information out to you as soon as possible. Great. Thank you very much, Catherine. Okay. Okay, and I, let's see, I'm going to try and clear out some of these questions for us. Uh, the first question, Monica, uh, so I'm a child and adolescent mental health therapist. Does this program apply to child mental health? Absolutely. Um, so it, it doesn't matter whether you're a child therapist, whether you're an adult therapist, um, if you satisfy the admissions requirements, meaning primarily that you've graduated from uh, a recognized master's program in counseling and psychotherapy and satisfied all of the other admissions requirements, then it doesn't matter if you're working um, with children or adults. Uh, Cindy asked a question. I'm a current MACP student uh, who already holds an MA degree. Uh, no, there is no accelerated, uh, there is no accelerated program. Um, everybody has the same admissions requirements, which includes uh, two years or 1,600 hours of uh, postmaster's practice. And that means postmasters in counseling and psychotherapy. Uh, anonymous attendee, uh, can you apply without having a master's with a thesis? Absolutely. Uh, there is no uh, thesis requirement to apply to the doctoral program. Um, as long as you have, again, a, a recognized master's of counseling and psychotherapy, uh, it doesn't matter if it's completely course-based or with a thesis. Next question is from Kristen. Uh, there's actually a couple of questions here. Uh, approved by New Brunswick, but is this accredited in, accredited in Canadian provinces? Um, uh, yes, the next question as well. This this is kind of confusing. Um, we we don't use the word accredited for our uh, post secondary education in Canada. That's a very uh, American uh, term. Um, so. Uh, universities, and this holds true for every single university in Canada, not just Yorkville, the authority to offer degrees comes from provincial ministries of education uh, in New Brunswick. That just happens to be the New Brunswick Ministry of Post-Secondary Education, Training, and Labor. Um, so this, we have received designation to offer this doctorate from the Higher Education Ministry 
in New Brunswick, meaning that this is a recognized doctoral degree, not only across Canada in every province and territory, but likely in most places in the world as well, uh, most certainly in North America. Um, I believe this, this was a very early question, so this has already been answered. Is this a PhD or a PsyD? The quick answer is that it's, it's neither. This is a new, unique, innovative degree, uh, professional doctorate in counseling and psychotherapy. Um, I will hand this one over to, to Dr. Alderson are, from Jake. Are there courses or specific streams offered? Uh, it sounds like uh, this is somebody who's interested in specializing in uh, trauma. Uh, so the program is uh, generic, but uh, you know the uh, AS, the Applied Scholarship Project, you can focus it on whatever area uh, you want to make your specialty area. Uh, furthermore, because uh, this program does not have practicums, and that uh, uh, this is an interesting feature of the program. Instead, we've gone with a process we call mentoring. And so a mentoring is with clients that you have currently. So you don't need to leave your employment. In fact, we encourage you to stick with your employment. Uh, it's uh, necessary that you have clients through at least four terms of the program while you are receiving mentoring from uh, the faculty member assigned to those particular courses. And uh, so we're not gonna have you change your uh, clientele. So if your work is with children or with uh, those who are autistic or whatever the, the clientele you're working with, um, you can continue to develop your expertise with those clients. Thank you. Uh, question, oh, Aaron, this one can be removed. There's a question from Samina about scholarships. Catherine already spoke to that issue. Um, that was Jake's question. Uh, Sophia, will this program offer a master's to PhD fast track option? Um, again, no, everybody has the same admissions requirements. Um, and Heidi, so it's 1,600 hours, Heidi. That, thank you for asking that. Um, gives us the opportunity to clarify that. Uh, we say two years, but in fact, I mean, it could be over three years. It could be over four years. Um, what's important is that it's 1,600 hours post-master's. Um, and this was asked in previous webinars, but for people who are currently MACP students, I don't see it asked here, but just to try and be preemptive, um, the, the 400 hours that you accumulate in your practicum for the MACP program does not count towards the 1600 hours. Uh, this is, uh, Marina has two questions. Uh, the second one, again, was already answered. Uh, this is not a PsyD. This is, um, this is a doctor of counseling and psychotherapy. There was a, oh, she had another question, which I missed. Uh, let me see if I can find that. I believe I answered it already, uh, Dr. Hall. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Uh, Lisa, just curious what the abbreviated credentials would be. And in fact, we don't know. Um, we are, at this point, we are referring it to, uh, simply to it by its, its full nomenclature, which is Doctor of Counseling and Psychotherapy. And we figured that we would actually let the students decide um, what they would like to call it. But it, I have to say that it already seems to have taken on a bit of a life of its own uh, with the use of DCP. Uh, but I mean, for the time being, the designation is a doctor of counseling and psychotherapy. Uh, Jordan, uh, this has already been answered. This is not a program. This is not a training program in psychology. This is a program specific to counseling and psychotherapy. Uh, Erica, 
uh, MA in conflict analysis and management. No, unfortunately, uh, it has to be a master's in counseling and psychotherapy because the doctorate is actually an extension of the training that you learn uh, in a master's training program in counseling and psychotherapy. Uh, this there still seems to be some confusion about the uh, the ASP, the Applied Scholarly Project. Kevin, um, perhaps you could speak more to that. How that's not in fact a, a dissertation, um, and how how it's specific uh, a specific capstone to a professional doctorate. Right. In many master's programs in uh, counseling. Uh, one completes uh, that master's with a capstone project and not a thesis. So some students uh, never complete a thesis at all. And so this DCP is an extension then of that master's level training. Um, and, and so the ASP is very much an applied project. Uh, it is not a, a, a new piece of empirical research in the field. Hi, thank you. I hope that helps. Uh, Stacy, are you able to double up on courses? Uh, no, actually, uh, no, the program was designed so that uh, no one is allowed to take courses concurrently. Um, there is a normal progression um, that all students have to go through, uh, ideally as part of their cohort. Um, so, uh, and as it is the program for people who attend full time, uh, the program is as Dr. Alderson had mentioned at the beginning, is 10 terms. So three and a third years to a doctorate. Uh, we have a number of questions, which I'll, I'll save because I see a number of similar questions about uh, why would somebody want to get this particular degree beyond the, the master's or the MACP, but I'll come back to that in a moment, Dr. Alderson. Um, Anonymous, would somebody with a master's in marriage and family therapy be able to apply to the uh, program? I assume yes, um, as long as you satisfy the, uh, the requirements, the admissions requirements. Um, and as we know, uh, quite often the master's in marriage and family therapy or master's in couples and family therapy uh, tends to be even more rigorous than uh, general master's in counseling and psychotherapy. So uh, without knowing for sure what program you were in, um, in general, I would say yes. Uh, Shailen, um, uh, again, we addressed this CPA. This isn't a psychology training program. Uh, we just responded to this question about what the credentials would be. Uh, Devinder, can we start the program as part-time and switch over to full-time? Dr. Alderson, can I hand that over to you to speak to the cohort model? Right, and so <clears throat> the cohort model is such that uh, a class has 16 students in it. And then uh, with the 16 students, we break them into four cohorts. And, and so you would be uh, in many of the classes doing some assignments and uh, practice and so forth uh, with that cohort of, of just four people. Our hope is that most people can start within a cohort and graduate with that same cohort. That we believe that that uh, really helps to facilitate a sense of cohesiveness while being in the program. Thank you. Um, and just to pick up on, we have a, a question by Kristen saying, um, is it okay to stretch the program out? Um, and the answer is yes, it's not ideal because again, this has been designed as a cohort program. Um, so the expectation is that you start and finish with the same 16 people. Um, and another reason for that is uh, built within that uh, there are micro support groups. So for every cohort of 16, there will also be uh, four groups of four of you who form uh, support groups uh, throughout the program. So um, again, if there's some reason not to follow the normal progression in the program, uh, we understand that. But uh, the understanding from students then is that you will not be placed back in with your cohort or with your micro support group. So you would need to join a different uh, cohort. Uh, Mary, this is a really good question. What are the expected number of hours per week? 
uh, that we expect you will dedicate to the program? And the answer to that is approximately 20. So it's similar to the MACP, but of course the MACP uh, courses are over five weeks and the doctoral courses are stretched out over seven weeks. So that lowers the number a little bit uh, to uh, 20 ish. Uh, anonymous, I am a, I'm an RP in Ontario. Are you eligible to apply? Uh, that's actually a fantastic question. Um, and it's actually a requirement to apply to this program that you be uh, registered either as a member of a regulatory college or a professional association such as CCPA or BCACC in BC, uh, either as a full member or as a qualifying member. So uh, make sure to review the admissions criteria because that is a requirement to apply to the program. Uh, okay, so uh, I guess this is time to go to this question. Um, Dr. Alderson, can you speak to the advantages of participating in the DCP beyond the MACP? Specifically, uh, some of the questions we're getting is why would I not just take continuing education courses? Um, what are the advantages of the doctorate? <clears throat> Yeah, that is a very good question. And, you know, um, you're in an emerging field of counseling and psychotherapy as a, a career with its own distinct identity. And as some of you know, you know, the Canadian Counseling and <clears throat> Psychotherapy Association uh, began a few years ago with the idea of getting uh, counseling regulated across Canada. And so uh, to that end, there are now four provinces that uh, uh, <clears throat> in order to practice counseling and psychotherapy, you need to be uh, in one of those regulated colleges. <clears throat> Sorry, I've been talking too much this morning. And then uh, Alberta is uh, in the transition period where their association of counseling therapy is about to become a college. We expect that as early as uh, this fall, by the way, but it may be a bit later than that. And so psychology has a well-established, uh, you know, profession, uh, has been a well-established profession, whereas counseling and psychotherapy in Canada has lagged a bit behind. Uh, in the United States, uh, counseling as a separate discipline from psychology has been around for years, and there are various accrediting bodies there. But uh, this is the first doctoral credential in this field in Canada. Uh, and, and so, um, uh, so now I think I've lost track of what the question was, Peter. And did I miss some part? <laughs> the question was, uh, in general, what are, uh, what are the advantages to taking the DCP beyond the MACP? Very good. So, so many people in, uh, in every field want to advance their training at some point. So this is the natural next step. And, and so why would you want to? Because as this program becomes uh, uh, you know, well known throughout Canada, it will be uh, seen as the highest credential in the counseling and psychotherapy field. That is going to open up new opportunities. First of all, uh, there'll be opportunities within Yorkville itself to become instructors in the program. And uh, as agencies and uh, government becomes uh, aware that the counseling field now has a doctoral credential, it's natural that that's going to uh, become the, uh, that's going to become the degree to have if you want to be in a supervisory capacity uh, and a leadership role. We do, uh, by the way, expect that our graduates will become the leaders of this evolving profession in Canada. And so uh, many of the things that will develop will develop over time. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's always challenging when you start a brand new degree program. You know, I was just looking at a PhD. Everybody knows what a PhD is in the world, but you know, uh, PhD degrees first started around the 12th century. 
So there's been centuries of people knowing what a PhD is. When you're now uh, at the beginning of a brand new doctoral level training with a brand new name, perhaps DCP, um, people don't know about it yet in Canada, but they do in the United Kingdom, they do in Australia. There are some similar programs in the United States. Ours is a distinctive program that was designed very carefully over a period of many years, actually, and it is different from every other degree out there. Thank you. Nigel, we have, uh, we have a number of questions about unique circumstances um, for people applying to the program. Is it best if they direct those specific questions to the admissions advisors? Um, you know, I think we uh, saw if, if, there, if there are circumstances uh, that, that need to be um, you know, discussed, then, then I would guide them to the admissions um, office, yeah. Perfect, okay, thank you. Uh, Rui asked a question. Uh, you participated in the MACP program at Yorkville a long time ago uh, when there was actually a, a paper for the final capstone project. Um, and I, I think the question there is whether or not you actually uh, convocated if you have the degree. So it is a requirement that you have a have graduated uh, with a master's in counseling and psychotherapy and then the rest of the requirements. Uh, we have a number of questions about the, the writing requirement for the application. And th that's actually a good question and perhaps we need to clarify that. Uh, the, the objective in asking you to submit a writing requirement is not so much to evaluate your writing, um, especially for those of you who are MACP um, students or grads, because we already know your level of writing. It's more to assess your, uh, your intentions or your, your reasons for wanting to participate in a doctoral program. Uh, so somebody had asked a question, can you submit, I think, your thesis uh, as an example of writing? And unfortunately, I'm, no, because I, I doubt that that would address the, uh, the question of why you want to take the doctorate. Um, uh, Michelle, are there faculty members listed on the website? In fact, uh, there are. So something to keep in mind is that, as Dr. Alderson just mentioned a couple of minutes ago, this is a brand new program. We are launching in September. Uh, and the program is going to, of course, grow over time as we admit more people to the program. So at this point, um, we have two full-time faculty members, uh, Dr. Alderson and Dr. Hindis, who um, some of you may uh, recognize from the MECP program. Um, so currently, those are the only two faculty. Their um, biographies actually are already on the website. Um, and as we bring on more faculty for the doctoral program, we will be including their uh, information on the website as well. Uh, will there be any, oh, uh, Dr. Alderson, uh, will there be any duplication of course topics or knowledge acquisition between the MACP and the DCP? You know, we, we really hope not. And given that uh, Dr. Hall and a few others were part of the uh, you know, committee that helped to uh, create the courses, there should be very little overlap. Thank you. Uh, question about um, extended medical benefits. And of course, that's, that's a fantastic question. Um, we had this question quite a bit in the last webinar as well. And uh, I mean, we, we as a, a school uh, will advocate as much as we can. Um, it's, it's really the role of uh, our professional associations to be uh, advocating on behalf of the profession. And I have to say that they, and the regulatory colleges I want to add, and I have to say that they absolutely are. Um, I know for a fact that CCPA and uh, CP, uh, CRPO in Ontario, which is one of the colleges that I'm registered with, um, are devoting significant resources, human and financial, to uh, trying to make sure that counselors and psychotherapists are recognized for extended health coverage. 
So this is a fantastic question. Um, and uh, Dr. Alderson may wish to speak more about this, but that this is a perfect example of uh, the need for this type of degree. Um, the expectation is that uh, he, uh, Dr. Olerson spoke to how graduates of this degree are going to be leaders in this field and leaders in identifying the, um, the, what it means to be a, a professional counselor or psychotherapy um, in Canada. And this is exactly one of those reasons why we really need to um, have people with this with this designation who can advocate for these types of of issues on our behalf. Uh, Dr. Alderson, um, will graduates of the program be allowed to use the word the term doctor? Uh, you will when you're working within an educational institution that there's been a long established uh, uh, you know, protocol for that so that uh, people that have a doctor of social work, for example, in a university setting can call themselves a doctor. Uh, now, when you're in practice, someone with a doctor of social work cannot use the title of doctor because the doctor title in terms of practice is, uh, is a term that uh, our health profession acts across the provinces dictate who can use the title and who cannot. I do foresee at a later time that this will become a recognized credential as our profession of counseling and psychotherapy becomes increasingly seen as a separate profession from psychology and the regulatory bodies are doing just that right now. But it will take time before this becomes uh, something I believe that that uh, health profession acts will incorporate into their acts. Another question. Uh, okay, back, back to, I just saw a question from Megan come in, clarification about the writing sample. Um, oh yeah, if, if it's relevant, if it answers the question of why uh, you want to participate in the doctoral program, then yes, you can use something from one of the courses in the MECP uh, program. I think you'd probably want to rewrite it or reframe it in the, uh, in the right format for a letter of intent, but uh, I think that would be fine. Um, we have a lot of questions coming in. My screen is bouncing around. Um, uh, anonymous, will the DCP enable professionals to diagnose clients? Uh, no, uh, again, this is not a training program in clinical psychology. Uh, currently, uh, only clinical psychologists are able to diagnose in most provinces in Canada. Uh, Chelsea, are courses offered during the day or in the evening? Uh, courses are offered primarily as um, asynchronously, but that said, all courses do have synchronous components. Um, but as for when, when uh, certain classes, certain cohorts will meet, that will be decided collectively in each course. Uh, Dr. Alderson, is the program comparable to uh, the similar programs that we referred to in the United Kingdom? Uh, the, I think the quick answer to that would it would be similar, but not identical. Uh, again, uh, will the format, uh, Stacy, will the format for this course be similar to the MACP? Yes and no. Um, I would like to say that. Um, First of all, in regards to the discussion questions, there are fewer discussion questions for sure in the doctoral curriculum. Uh, I believe that uh, most courses have a maximum of one DQ per unit. And uh, another thing that those of you who are in the MACP program uh, will likely know that we've in, invested um, a huge, we've made a huge investment in improving our instructional technologies. And the doctoral program was the first to take advantage of these. So uh, you will be 
pleasantly surprised to see that the doctoral courses are uh, behind the scenes, they're very similar in the sense that, yes, there will be a discussion question, there will be papers, uh, but there, we've made much better use of instructional technologies such as uh, videos, uh, interactive videos. Uh, it's actually amaz amazing what we've been able to do, uh, and eventually we'll be uh, bringing all of our courses and all programs up to this new standard of uh, technology. But uh, fortunately for you, this has started with a doctoral program. Uh, Marinella, how do we fulfill that requirement if we'd worked post MACP and do not have academic publications? Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure if I missed something. Um, there's no requirement for academic publications, Marinella. Um, uh, anonymous, will some of our master's course week, coursework be compared to the current doctoral courses? And if there is an overlap, uh, no, actually, there are no transfer credits allowed into the doctoral program. Devinder, Will the MEC, uh, will the DCP have exams? No, uh, not, not to speak of. I don't think in the sense that you're referring to. Um, that said, I want to just remind you that there will actually be an oral defense uh, in term 10 at the end of the program. So, I mean, in a way that's, that is a type of exam, but um, not in the undergraduate uh, sense of the term. No, there won't be. Uh, uh, Marinella, the writing sample is, is, uh, is simply a letter. Uh, I, I think it's better to think of it in terms of a letter of intent, uh, meaning uh, the admissions committee wants to know why you are interesting. What are your motivations for uh, wanting to take a, the doctorate? Uh, there's Ingrid, uh, if I missed your question, um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, it wasn't intentional. Um, maybe I'll ask our, our hidden moderator behind the scenes, our director of communications, Aaron, if you could perhaps find Ingrid's question, I'd be happy to answer it. I will look now. Thank you. Um, and I hope I'm saying the last name correctly, uh, Dr. Dr. Jewell. Um, you're here on behalf of your wife asking questions. Um, so I, I think I kind of just spoke to this, um, that the, the whole field of counseling and psychotherapy is moving towards being accepted by insurance. Um, and as we've seen recently in the last, not that long, probably, the last year, uh, and, we, and this is an odd thing to say, but um, because of COVID, we've actually made some forward progress in being recognized by insurance companies uh, for third-party billing. So uh, we still have a long way to go uh, in terms of counselors and psychotherapists being recognized for uh, extended health benefit recognition. Kathy. Oh, I think I'm missing something. Um, requirement, two requirements, one for a letter of intent and one for a writing sample. There are, uh, Dr. Hall, there are uh, two currently listed uh, on the website in academic calendar. So uh, perhaps that might be something that um, you and Lan uh, need to address. Um, so it, it could just be a, a, a mistake on, uh, on the website, but uh, we can certainly clarify uh, that for you and get back to you uh, soon. I'll make a note of it now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I do think that that's a mistake, but I, I'm sorry for the, uh, the confusion and thanks for letting me know, Kathy. Um, and it's good to see you here, Kathy. Uh, and Parul, um, I think may, maybe you had had a two-part question. 
Um, I only see the second part here and uh, as it stands, thanks Kathy, uh, as it stands, it doesn't make sense. Um, uh, no, Dr. Jewell, there, there is not a dissertation. Um, there is an applied scholarly project, uh, which, yes, which Dr. Alderson did speak to uh, a couple of times. So there is information about that online. Um, and we're down to one question, oh, which I already answered. So we're, we, we're actually down to uh, zero questions. Um, and we have six minutes left. So um, I would hate to end the meeting um, prematurely if anybody still has questions. Oh, sorry, I've just, I've just received a message from Aaron behind the scenes that uh, we're actually having some challenges, technical issues with the Q&A forum. Um, if, if we happen to have missed any of your questions, because to me it looks like I've answered all of the questions in the forum, if not, then please, um, please make sure that you email your questions to, I believe, the doctorate email. Nigel, is that correct? Uh, yes, that's correct, Dr. Hall. So uh, any questions can be submitted to doctoraladmissions at yorkvilleview.ca. And I'll actually post that now so uh, all of you have access to that. Perfect. Thank you, Nigel. And um, uh, Karen, when will, uh, Nigel, this is a question for you. When will applicants be notified of acceptance? Yeah, exciting question. Um, <laughs> so, uh, as scheduled, uh, we, we've already uh, had uh, had a good number of uh, people apply for the September intake, and our first uh, committee meeting will be held next week. Uh, so, once uh, we receive your application fee, um, the required documents, and order to be considered by committee, uh, typically the term turnaround time would be uh, within a week. Great, thank you. Uh, Darlene, do you have any sense of how many individuals might apply for a September spot? Another question for you, Nigel. Um, well, uh, I, I, uh, be prior to this uh, session, I did take a look and uh, I, I can say that we're, we're starting to get limited. Uh, so if you are considering um, uh, joining a, a cohort in September, I would really encourage you to submit your application as soon as possible. Um, my best guess is that we will likely need to close uh, the applications for September early next week. Uh, that's how quickly uh, we have um, sort of built up our, our uh, number of um, uh, applications for uh, the September intake. Having said that, uh, the application page is open for January of 2021, May of 2021, and September of next year. Uh, so you do have opportunities to join a future cohort, uh, but I understand that uh, most people are excited and want to get started uh, sooner or later. Thanks, Nigel. Um, with uh, uh, Marinella, um, I, I already spoke to this a couple of times. As graduates, we'll be allowed to register with CP, uh, CPO. Um, no, this is not a training program in psychology. Uh, it's a training program in uh, counseling and psychotherapy. Devinder, uh, you're correct. Um, again, the, the title of doctor is a protected title. Um, by law, the, the only professionals who can call themselves doctor um, is, uh, is uh, stated in the variously titled Provincial Health Acts. And the number of people or the professions that can do that is fairly constant across the provinces and typically uh, is limited to physicians, optometrists, clinical psychologists, um, chiropractors. Um, so until, until um, someone is able to change the laws in, 
in one or all of the provinces, then uh, graduates of this program will not be able to refer to themselves as doctor. And I just want to add that this is not specific to our doctorate. This is the same for all of the other mental health and uh, allied health professions. So that includes uh, social workers, uh, occupational therapists, physical therapists, um, none of them doctorally trained are allowed to refer to themselves clinically uh, in a clinical setting as doctor either. There was a question I, I noticed uh, people, uh, someone asking about, is there an age limit? And there is not. We would love to have you come in the program, whatever age you are, because this is about uh, contribution to the field. And those who have more wisdom are often the very best uh, therapists. Uh, Dr. Jewel, oh, you've asked another good question, and I'm not sure that I actually have an answer for it, but I'll um, ask Dr. Alderson. Um, did we actually decide on a page limit for the ASP, the Applied Scholarly Project? No, we never did decide on a page limit. And, you know, just off the cuff, I would say something in the neighborhood of 80 to 120 pages would be sufficient. Okay. Double space. Right. And Anonymous, I think I just saw your question before it disappeared. So um, we, is it on our radar to advocate um, for, let me see if I can see the rest of your question somewhere, because uh, it was a good question. Uh, Anonymous, could you, could you please post your question? again about whether we it's on our radar to advocate for something um sarah dr hall it's advocate advocacy for this designation is the title of doctor on the radar for advocacy for this designation yes absolutely and and sorry if i wasn't clear earlier um that's that's one of the messages that i was trying to get across is that um, for us to be able to do that uh, we have to be recognized as a legitimate profession, which as uh, all of us know here who are actually practicing in the field, um, there is no Canadian identity of counseling and psychotherapy. So, um, you know, until we actually have such, it will be very difficult to convince any provincial uh, government to include us on the list of people of professions that can call themselves doctors. So um, again, that's just one of the, the many reasons for uh, participating in this innovative field and advocating in many different ways for our profession of counseling and psychotherapy. Um, oh, it sounds, oh, I'm, <laughs> uh, now there are a few questions left, uh, I think. I've probably addressed most of these. However, um, I'm being reminded by Aaron behind the scenes that uh, we have to end this webinar. So um, I, I hope you found this helpful. Again, if you have questions that we didn't answer, if we missed um, mistakenly, then please, please email us. Again, that is at uh, doctoraladmissions at yorkvilleu.ca. Did I give that correctly? Okay. Uh, and thank you. Thank you all for attending. I hope you found this to be helpful. Again, just as a reminder, all of this information is on the website. If you still have questions, by all means, reach out to uh, admissions. They will be happy to answer all of your questions. Um, if, if there's something that is program specific and they can't answer it, they will certainly uh, come to Dr. Alderson and myself and we will find out the answer for you. Um, I, I hope that uh, this has piqued your interest and that uh, we'll, see your, we'll see your applications to this, this very innovative new doctorate and uh, look forward to working with you in the doctorate. Uh, thank you all for your time and take care.